Well, thank you uh, very much for coming today. Um, we're here today for an important issue. Uh, many of you are probably aware of the tragedy that occurred in Mankato. And uh, Hannah uh, was at a licensed daycare center and choked on a grape and actually died. And um, I had heard about this story, but uh, didn't know a lot about the details until I received a phone call from one of my constituents, Hannah's grandpa, Ron, um, talking about uh, not only uh, the problems with uh, the lack of uh, measurables. And uh, when that tragedy happened, we uh, we could, it was a lot to bear, but then when we found out the regulations and that she was in a daycare and all children in Minnesota were in a daycare that only has to have one qualified person with CPR, we'll never know if there was more would have helped her. The, I guess the way I look at it is that if it just saves one life, it it's well worth it. I mean, what we've had to go through in the last six, seven months is just unbelievable. Words can't describe it. And, and how is it today? Oh, the emotions, and but we're still here. We're going to fight for her and fight for all the other kids out there so they can come home at the end of the day. Thank you. We keep going every day. We have our oldest daughter, Maddie, who, you know, we keep going strong every day for her. And, you know, if we didn't, then, you know, she wouldn't have her parents, obviously, if we weren't strong for her. So not only did we lose out on Hannah, Maddie last, lost out on her best friend, her sister. But I don't know that I would have thought to ask this question. If I did, I, I think I would have made the assumption that my kids were going to be around people that were trained in safety. Read the story, hear the story, listen to the family, and see that they received a thousand dollar fine. I mean, none of it makes sense. But you can't undo what happened, and we have to move forward. And this is just one step in trying to make sure that a situation like this never occurs again. And the important part about this type of training is not only do you get the actual training on how to um, actually do the, the physical, uh, whether it's CPR or mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth or Heimlich, you also get training on when it's appropriate to call, how to react in emergency situations, some role-playing skill set beyond the actual um, doing of the first aid uh, technique that also provides uh, additional or heightened safety for children in the care of those individuals. And, and like the senator said, these individuals that are trained, well, that makes for a better child care situation. It'll also make for a better situation in a restaurant or at a beach or, or whatever as well. The more people we have trained in the state, the better. That there's not, it's not that expensive to do this. Can you just say, as a former CPR instructor, how much time does it take to train someone in this? And well, I just asked because it's been years since I've taken it. And, uh, and let me say first, when you do take the instruction, the first thing you do is you yell out, somebody call 911. That's the first thing you do. And it's something that should have been done probably here. Uh, the cost is about $60. I check with the department and there won't be a fiscal note associated. Uh, with this. Well, within a couple of weeks. Oh, I'd like to go faster than faster that, than but that? that's a leadership corner decision, and we'll see how Same long it thing takes with the Senate. Senate yeah. You're, you're going to move this quickly. Yep. Yeah. Just for folks who maybe don't have kids in daycare but have kids in school.